Tensiometers are a helpful tool with monitoring soil water tension, which can help inform irrigation choices. In this video, we're going to show you how to build your own tensiometer. First, grab the materials you'll need, one being a ceramic cup. This one has a beveled end, which we will have to account for. Next, grab a PVC tee with two slip ends that'll fit the PVC pipe and a threaded end that'll fit the gauge. A vacuum gauge that will measure the soil tension range you wish to monitor. A rubber stopper that'll snugly fit into the PVC pipe. And finally, the PVC pipe itself at a desired length and diameter that you'd wish to use. Some additional materials needed are some PVC primer and glue. For the ceramic cup we're using in this video, we'll need a two-part epoxy. Thread sealant for the gauge. And finally, some petroleum jelly to make a really tight seal with the rubber stopper. Tools to help construct the tensiometer are painter or masking tape, a measure tape to measure appropriate lengths, a miter box for nice perpendicular cuts, and a PVC cutting tool. Some other items that may be needed would be a clamp to securely and safely hold things down when cutting. Since we're using a two-part epoxy, you would need an item to mix it and apply it. And since the ceramic cup in this video is beveled, we need a hand drill with an appropriate size grinding stone. To construct the tensiometer, make sure you're wearing the proper protective equipment. So make sure you're wearing the appropriate gloves and working in a well-ventilated area or wearing the appropriate respirator. Here we're cutting the bottom shaft, which goes from the ceramic cup up to the T-joint with the gauge. The total length of the bottom shaft is going to be dependent on how deep you want the tensiometer to go, but regardless of the depth, you always want to add 5 to 6 inches so that way a portion of the tensiometer can stick out of the ground. In this example, we're cutting the tensiometer to go to a 2 foot depth, which means the bottom shaft is going to be around 30 inches long. However, the first cut is going to be a little bit past that 30 inch length to better accommodate a perpendicular cut with the miter box. After measuring, we're going to want to cut with a PVC cutter. Then you're going to want to clamp the pipe into the miter box and align it. Then come in with the saw and start cutting. This step is important because you want a clean perpendicular cut so that way the bottom of the shaft aligns well with the ceramic cup. Next we're going to have to cut the top shaft of the tensiometer which will run from the T-joint with the gauge up to the rubber stopper. And for this we just need a simple 4 inch length that can then be cut with the PVC cutter. So now we have a bottom shaft that's cut to the appropriate length that will be fitted to the ceramic cup with a nice perpendicular cut at the end. This bottom shaft would then go to a T-joint that will have the pressure gauge attached, which would also then have the top shaft, and then finally the rubber stopper to go on top. Due to the bevel, this ceramic cup is not completely flush with the bottom shaft, so we're going to need to use the drill and the grinding stone to grind down the cut end of the bottom shaft test fitting along the way until there's a nice, clean, flush fit with the ceramic cup to the bottom shaft. There are other ceramic cups on the market, and those may need a different way to secure it to the bottom shaft. But for this one, the grinding stone works well. Regardless of which ceramic cup you may be using, when adhering it to the bottom shaft, it's very important to protect the portion of the ceramic cup that will be in contact with the soil. A workaround for this is to apply painter or masking tape to the top end that'll have the adhesive to both the ceramic cup and the bottom shaft. The tape should be placed as close to the edge of the ceramic cup and the bottom shaft. After taping the ends, you would then want to apply your adhesive, in this case a two-part epoxy that's been pre-mixed, to both the shaft and the ceramic cup. Once applied, you will then insert them so that they stick together, and in this case, the cup had to be secured with additional tape, so that way it could fit flush with the shaft. After the adhesive has dried for enough time, the tape should be removed, being extra careful not to damage the ceramic cup. After this point, the shafts can be connected to the T-joint. To adhere the shafts to the T-joint to treat it like any other PVC pipe, then take your primer and apply it to the inside of the T-joint and the exterior of the shaft. Be sure to coat all sides evenly. And then take your glue and do it again. Then you'll want to insert the shaft into the T-joint twisting slightly about 30 to 45 degrees, and then holding it in place for about 30 seconds to one minute. Then repeat the process with the other shaft, applying the primer and glue, and then inserting it into the T-joint, twisting slightly and holding. 
Once the PVC primer and glue has had enough time to cure, we're going to want to then attach the gauge to the T-joint. To do this, we're going to use thread sealant and apply it to the threads of the gauge. Once enough sealant has been applied, you will then want to hand tighten the gauge into the T-joint. Hand tightening prevents cracking the T-joint. As you're screwing it in, you want to then determine the orientation of the gauge, either pointing upwards or off to the side. In this example, we are choosing the pointed upwards as we will be looking at the vacuum from the top. Once the gauge is hand tight and oriented in the direction that you want, you want to allow the sealant and all the other adhesives to cure and dry. During this time, it would be good to prepare the liquid that will be going inside the tensiometer. The liquid will be degassed distilled water. To degas the water, you want to put it in a pot and bring it to a boil. While this method does not create the best degassed water, it is one of the more practical and safest ways to get it. Because once the water gets to a boil, you allow it to get to room temperature, put it in another container to then transfer into the tensiometer. The degas distilled water can be poured into the top of the tensiometer and then sealed with the rubber stopper. But the rubber stopper needs to be coated with petroleum jelly to provide a very tight seal. To coat the stopper, you want to take a little bit of petroleum jelly on the tip of your finger and rub it along the base of the stopper. You can then insert the stopper into the top of the tensiometer while providing a slight twist. This should provide a very tight seal, preventing any air entering the tensiometer. With everything sealed up and degas distilled water in the tensiometer, you want to make sure to test it before you install it. To do this, you want to wrap a dry paper towel around the ceramic cup and then watch the gauge. This portion of the video is sped up to show the change in tension. During the test, the tension should get to at least negative 20 to negative 30 kilopascals. If the tests were successful, you can call it good, and you have a functional working tensiometer that you built yourself. While it may not be a one-to-one -one replacement for one that can be bought off the shelf, it is perfectly usable and helpful to measure soil water tension. While the overall cost savings only really makes sense if you're making multiple tensiometers, hopefully this tutorial has shown you what that process can be like. If interested, there should be a link with written instructions to build this tensiometer. Otherwise, I thank you for your time watching this video, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day.